Hi, welcome to this, the second tutorial in the series on the binomial distribution. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with the binomial distribution. If not, take a look at the first tutorial in this series. Now the aim of this tutorial is to answer this question. Is there a formula for calculating binomial probabilities rather than drawing a tree diagram and calculating the probability of certain events from it? Well the answer is yes. But in order to appreciate the formula, I feel it's important that we look at tree diagrams in a bit more detail. So let's start by looking at a particular tree diagram. Now here is a binomial distribution, one that we discussed in the very first tutorial, that of throwing a fair die three times over looking for scoring a six. If we score a six, it's a success. If we don't score a 6, it's a failure. The probability of scoring a 6 is 1 sixth and the probability of a failure not scoring a 6 is 5 sixths. So if we start by looking at the random variable x, the number of 6's thrown, then x would follow a binomial distribution with three trials and the probability of success, that is getting a 6, is 1 sixth. Now if we were asked to work out the probability of getting no sixes, for instance, we would need to travel down this path of the tree diagram and the probability of that happening would be 5 six times 5 six times 5 six. There we go. 5 six, the probability of a failure repeated three times over. So that would be 5 six cubed. Let's have a look at another one the probability of getting 1 6. Now there's several ways that we could get 1 6. We could go up here and get a 6 on the first throw and then not get 6's on the next two throws. So that probability would be 1 6 times 5 6 times 5 6 up there. We could however not throw a 6 on the first go then throw a 6 and then not throw a 6 and that would have this probability. And there's another path through the tree diagram. We could find that we don't throw a 6 on the first throw, nor on the second, but on the third. And that would have this probability. Now you can see that in each one of these brackets, we've got the probability of success, that's 1 sixth occurring once, and the probability of failure, 5 six occurring twice. And this happens three times over. So really what we've got is three times the probability of success, one sixth, times five sixths, the probability of failure, squared. Now, we could have getting two sixes. And two sixes can occur in many ways. And here's the different ways that it can occur, the paths through the tree diagram. And if we were to look at those probabilities, we would end up with this sum. We see that we want two successes and we end up with one sixth being repeated in each bracket, the probability of success. And there'll only be one failure, five six, and that occurs once in each of the brackets. And we've got three brackets here for the three paths that go through the tree diagram. So the answer will be three lots of one sixth squared times five sixths. We can also have the probability that x equals 3. Three successful goes of getting a 6. And that can only occur once through this path through here. And the probability of that happening will be 1 sixth times 1 sixth times 1 sixth. In other words, 1 sixth cubed. Now, this is all very well and good, but just imagine if I'd thrown the die say five times. The tree diagram would be huge and the calculations a lot more involved. So it's got to be a quicker way. Let's have a look at that tree diagram. Now here you see a tree diagram for throwing the die five times. And it's something that I certainly wouldn't want to do normally. But I've just done it here for the purposes of illustration. And because there's hardly much room here to write in all the probabilities of success and failure, I've 
coloured them in as red for success and that is the probability of getting a six is one sixth and the probability of not getting a six is five sixths and I've coloured that in in blue. Now if I was to define the random variable x as the number of sixes thrown then in this particular example x is distributed binomially and there are five trials and the probability of success that is throwing a six is one sixth. Now suppose I was asked to work out the probability of getting three sixes for instance that's x equals three. Well I certainly as I say wouldn't want to draw a tree diagram out but one way I could do it is to do a calculation like this and that is to jot down all the different ways that I could get that success of throwing a six. And like in the first calculation here I could throw a six first of all then again then again and then in the final two throws not get a six. And I could as I say look at all the different ways like in this last one here I don't throw a six, I don't throw a six, and then I do on the next three goes. That's this path down through here. Not a six, not a six, then a six, then a six, then a six. And you'll notice, I hope, that in all of these brackets you've got the same calculation. Although it's a bit muddled. We always get a success three times over, so that's one sixth to the power three. And we also have two failures and that would be five sixths squared. So if we were given this question the probability x equals three what I would know then is that in any branch or path if you like through the tree diagram there would always be three successes that would be one sixth to the power three. And because there's five trials there must be two failures. So we've got a probability of five sixths for a failure and that would be occurring twice over. So it's, we've got five sixths squared. The only question is how many different paths were there of achieving three successes through the tree diagram? Well there is a quick way of figuring this out and it's a button that you'll find on scientific calculators. It's a button called NCR where N is the number of trials and R is the number of successes in this case three. So write that in as three and N was the number of trials and in this case it is five. So we'll find this button on the calculator 5C3. So here is a typical scientific calculator and on this calculator the NCR button is just above the division sign. So if I press 5C3 we'll go for 5 and then this particular calculator I've got to press the shift button so shift and then we do that we get C and then press 3 and equals and we've got 10. It's telling me that there should be 10 paths through the tree diagram that give three successes. So this is 10 multiplied by 1 sixth cubed times 5 sixths squared. Are there 10 paths? Well let's just find out. In that calculation we did, you'll notice I did that calculation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Yep, there were 10 of these calculations. Alternatively, I could look at the paths through the tree diagram. There they are. Three successes. There's ten of them. I'll put the tree diagram back and take it off again. Ten paths with three successes. Okay, so all we need to do now is just work this calculation out. And if you do it on your calculator, what you should find is that you get 125 over 3,888. So that's the probability then of getting three successes. Now suppose for instance I didn't throw the die five times but I threw it say eight times. Then I'd have x as distributed binomially there'll be eight trials 
and the probability of success would be one sixth again. Now, suppose in this example I had to work out the probability of, say, getting five successes. I'd write five, or I should really write, I would write x equals five. Now I know that in any path through the, that tree diagram there would be the probability of success which is one sixth and that would have occurred five times over. There would have been failure and that failure would have been a probability of five sixths but because there are eight trials and I have done the five times successfully there must be three failures five and three making the eight trials. But how many different paths would there have been through the tree diagram? Well I'd need to use the function NCR. N would be the number of trials, eight, and R would be the number of successes and that would be five. So if we use the calculator again, we've now got to type in eight, then C, 5. 8C5 equals 56. That is one humongous amount of paths through a tree diagram. So you can see that it would be silly to attempt to try and draw it. So we've got 56 different paths through that tree diagram, all with the probability of 1 sixth to the power 5 and 5 sixths cubed. So if we finish this calculation off, on your calculator you should find that you get 875 out of 209952. Now in general, if we have a tree diagram where we have n trials and the probability of success is p and the probability of failure which is 1 minus p and I'm going to call it q if we have a situation like this, then what we've got is x, that's the number of successes, follows a binomial distribution with n trials and the probability of success is p. Then the probability that the number of successes equals, say, r, is equal to, well, we know that in any path through the tree diagram, there's going to be a probability of success p and that's going to occur repeatedly r times over. So that would be p to the power r. Then there's the failures and the failures occur with the probability q and if we've got n trials and there are r successes there must be n minus r failures. And the number of ways that this particular calculation can occur will be the number of paths through the tree diagram and that number of paths is always given by n c r. So this is the general formula for working out the probability then of r successes. So that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. But in my next tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can use this particular equation and work out the probability of being more than R or less than R and also how to use cumulative binomial probability tables.